The number of robots which were produced every year across the world uh, would be in the tune of one million, one and a half million. I grew up uh, at a place uh, in Bihar and there uh, mostly parents ask you to be an IS officer. So <laughs> the dream was to be an IS officer. Hi, I am Sangeet, founder and CEO of Adverb Technologies. I am a chemical engineer, did my BTEC in 2002 from IIT Kharagpur and for last 20 years I have been in the field of automation and robotics. So we were working for Asian Paints, all the co-founders, we were working for Asian Paints and we were building world's largest factory at single location for paint industry. We kept on building these world's largest factory, beating our own record every third year one after the other. And these factories required a lot of automation. As a customer who was using this automation, we felt two needs which were not served in the market. One was, so there were either conventional automation players, all, uh, all these large companies from Europe, Japan, US, who believed in uh, conventional technologies like Sutter, CSRS, etc. And then there were new upcoming companies in warehouse automation and factory automation, which were using robots of different sizes and forms to solve the end customer's need. And each of these set of companies felt that the other technology is useless. But as a customer, we felt that we needed both these technologies with one software frame uh, to manage both these technologies so that we can take best use of these technologies and uh, get the best out of the processes and uh, automation systems. One of the primary motive of automation in uh, developed countries uh, is mostly the cost of labor, uh, which is a substantial portion in their operation cost. In India, uh, because uh, the, we have cost effectiveness in uh, as far as labor market is concerned, automation does not get justified naturally. So uh, there are certain, uh, you need to educate the customer what automation can bring to them. Now, one of the things in India which, is, which makes automation very lucrative is the use of cubic space. So uh, land cost in India is really high. Uh, it is comparable to any European country. Or uh, even the construction cost and the time taken in construction is uh, high uh, according to any uh, developed standard. So if you use automation, then what you can do is you can use the space effectively, reducing the uh, cost of land as well as construction cost. And these two costs actually uh, uh, helps you in uh, uh, one the reduction in the cost of the total project gets compensated by the automation cost and you don't spend extra money per se it is only that the money what you spent is gets used or money you save gets used in uh, a different uh, form in the last eight years the field of robotics has changed immensely and uh, it is because of the advent of artificial intelligence or artificial general intelligence and now we are uh, talking of ASI which is artificial. So uh, these uh, AI or AGI or ASI has been, what it has been able to do is to give the robot the ability not only to do routine tasks but also cognitive tasks, the ability to think and make decisions. And that is why if you see the kind of investment which has happened in robotics across the world is huge. The second thing which has happened is people have become more comfortable in using this in their workplaces. So the companies like us have worked really hard on human-robot interaction, HRI or human-robot collaboration. 
and that has helped that has made humans more comfortable in understanding and using these technologies and also understanding that what robots necessarily can do is not what it will eat up the job of the humans but both have to work together and in fact uh, that is why if you see our vision statement we talk about human robot collaboration and pioneering in it so it is both humans and robots are necessary are needed in warehouse in factories in hospitals in any institute uh, and not only institutions it is also the homes uh, which require robots in different form and so the robotic space in the last 8 years has changed considerably when we started uh, there were certain number of robotic companies today uh, in this 8 years itself i think the number of robotic companies in the world has tripled and number of robots uh, today uh, if you see uh, when we started uh, the number of robots which were produced every year across the world uh, would be in the tune of one million one and a half million that has grown considerably uh, and what it, it is predicted that by 2040 we will have as many number of robots as humans so if the uh, population uh, human count increases from 7.8 billion people to 9.2 billion people by 2040 you will have equivalent number of robots uh, maybe more more than 9.2 billion more maybe uh, 10 billion robots uh, working together in homes in all the institutes and also in industry so uh, we uh, when we started the company as i was saying uh, it was e-commerce and retail boom and 90 percent of our business used to come from e-commerce and retail today 15 to 20 percent of our business comes from e-commerce and retail we are into almost every industry so conventional industry like automotive or uh, petrochemicals or chemical or tire industry then we are into uh, pharma uh, we are into healthcare uh, we are uh, some of the newer industries are contributing a lot uh, to our business whether it is semiconductor which is new to India uh, whether it is uh, 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 the uh, batteries uh, battery technology or the new energy in the form of solar etc and in each of these sphere we have success stories if you see robotics the two core technology which is uh, in robotics is perception and navigation and navigation uh, robots uh, are the kind of robots that we build uh, which is a mobile robot which can move from one place to another either wheeled or non-wheeled one which is uh, our uh, quadruped which is a dog like robot now uh, the robot to be stable uh, uh, it is very easy uh, for humans to stand on two legs but for a machine to stand on four legs it is very very difficult where uh, you don't know the terrain and you uh, understand the terrain only when you put your leg there or when you are only on two legs to stabilize it so that itself requires lot of algorithm lot of training lot of data uh, for the robot to similarly uh, a robot uh, a mobile robot uh, is like a self driving car uh, but in in a controlled environment so a self-driving car runs at 100 km per hour uh, in an environment where it is raining or there is sunlight etc or uh, uh, a kid can come between the road and then uh, the uh, car has to behave in a particular way similarly in a warehouse but in a much controlled environment with lesser speed the robot has to understand the environment and take the best route and it is not only about that particular robot but it is uh, 200 robots or 150 robots working together to do the job all the tasks which have been thrown to the robot to do the task in the most optimal way without 
hitting each other without harming each other and uh, with consumption of least amount of energy and these are possible today only because of AI and AGI uh, in the form uh, it is. The perception, uh, see, uh, for a human eye to differentiate between two items which are kept one above the other is very easy because we have been trained for that uh, throughout our uh, life uh, when we are two years old or three years old, we have understood that. But for a robot which understands or which is nothing but a machine, uh, it understands zero one. So two objects which are kept together, it understands it as a one object. And unless you use AI technology, uh, something like segmentation or uh, something which differentiates two items and then the grasping of these items itself, uh, for humans, again, it comes very natural. Some of the skills which we think is very natural to humans is the most difficult for the machine and until unless because AI is there today therefore the machine is able to do half the work of human uh, if it would not have been there uh, uh, it would not have been able to do so uh, something like grasping now if it is a soft object you have to grasp uh, softly so that it does not break or uh, if it is a hard object you have to grasp uh, in a particular way for a robot to understand that it is a very very difficult job and you need to keep on training it with virtual data or assisted with real data amount of energy which is used to do a job now if I use a robot which is, uh, when I say sustainable, it is on let us say lithium titanium oxide chemistry, the battery technology. Now what happens is because of that, you can use the same battery and charge it and discharge it 20,000 times, which is effectively 10 years. If you are doing it uh, three times a, a day, uh, it is effectively uh, 10 years time now 10 years after 10 years you need to change if you go with normal lithium ion chemistry or lithium ion phosphate chemistry every second year third year you have to change the battery these battery when you need to change it there is a particular way of recycling it because you need to extract the cobalt or magnesium or lithium from there and there is it is a very energy intensive process uh, even the collection uh, of these lithium ion batteries and then the whole circular economy around it uh, is a bit bit difficult so what we do is uh, we uh, build all our robots on LTO uh, most of our robots are uh, built with non-virgin plastic so these are recycled plastics uh, which we use for building uh, robots uh, the factory that we have built in we have used a lot of uh, a lot of uh, sustainable practices uh, and that is where our robots get built in i grew up uh, uh, at a place uh, in Bihar and there uh, mostly parents ask you to be an IAS officer so <laughs> the dream was to be an IAS officer but uh, yeah I got into IIT and uh, there uh, I came uh, in touch with some of the smartest uh, people uh, whom I know today and uh, uh, the aspirations which they had and uh, the change what they wanted to do or wanted to make uh, in the society uh, uh, and uh, that inspired me and uh, yeah, uh, before this uh, I, I just wanted to work hard and uh, make a difference in smallest way possible and uh, it was in Asian paints uh, that uh, I had this uh, desire to learn as much as possible. I continue to learn and uh, I think that is the only way to grow uh, and uh, uh, from a chemical engineer I became a civil engineer and a mechanical and electrical uh, learning in the process on the job and uh, luckily uh, for me uh, Asian Paints decided to uh, automate their warehouses 
and uh, I was one of the project uh, person and I got interested in robotics and, and that is how uh, I learnt it and uh, I learnt a lot and I got fascinated about it and I felt uh, yeah we can do it in India. Today uh, if you see uh, we are currently working only in warehouse or factories of the future and uh, th that we are doing not only in India but across the world. We have our robots today running in more than 30 countries and uh, uh, delivering value to our end customers. But I feel the uh, robotics is not only for factories and warehouses but it will affect the healthcare industry in a big, big way. Today, out of 7.2 billion people who are there on the earth, there are 1 billion people or more than 1 billion people who require one or the other kind of assistance, whether it is because of their age or uh, if uh, because they are sick in one way or the other. And this assistance today, uh, either there is no assistance for the person or if there is a assistance, uh, it is not continuous and uh, you have people supporting uh, people. Uh, okay, there might be nurse, there might be uh, uh, medical healthcare workers who are supporting it or family members himself. Uh, but they are not uh, present every time. And uh, this assistance is required in basic, uh, basic movement, whether it is movement of the upper limb or the lower limb or uh, the complete body. And I think that is one area which would get revolutionized by the way technology is changing. So there will be uh, the way a person wears a wearable watch today, there will be wearable robots. These are robots which will take uh, signals from the muscles or from the brain and help a person move like a normal uh, young and healthy person. So that is one area which would definitely get revolutionized, revolutionized. Just imagine we have six lakh villages in India and each of these villages uh, uh, during childbirth, women have to travel a lot for basic ultrasound because uh, none of the technician radiologist wants to work in the village even if we have 60000 primary healthcare centers uh, you don't have radiologists going there and helping uh, uh, or doing this uh, ultrasound but these things can change significantly with robots coming into picture uh, robots can be controlled by a haptic device uh, which is communicating with the robot on 5g and robot can do as good uh, ultrasound as uh, uh, possible by some of the best technicians so this is with 5g with haptic sensor with robot you can do all kind of imaging and I'm, uh, ultrasound is just a start. So it is just a start and uh, it will become more and more complex. Uh, Indian government is funding some of the research uh, in uh, institutes wherein they are trying to build uh, machines uh, which can help humans uh, reduce the casualty in war and uh, it would be uh, robots which would be fighting war for us. So th there are several and uh, uh, agriculture will change in a big way with the advent of robots because uh, the uh, earth, the amount of land which is available because there is a lot of construction industry coming in, amount of land available for feeding 9.2 billion people, it is not there. So it has to uh, be vertical farming and that is not possible with, uh, that is not possible without robots. So robots will be there in every, and that is how the number what we are talking about in 2040. So uh, companies in India, there are, uh, apart from us, there are a lot many other companies which are uh, doing lot of research to make a mark in this space.